our designer challenge theme this month is called pull it. And so that means that we should use a pull card die or the hanging charm pull tab. And I am also going to make this video be a pop post video. So what that means is I am choosing somebody in my life to craft a very specific card for that person. This month I am choosing my niece, Hannah. So Hannah just celebrated a birthday. She is very musical. She loves music. She plays in her marching band for high school, but she also kind of can just like pick up instruments and, and figure them out. She's really very gifted musically. And Hannah loves puns. So I know for sure that her card is going to be something with a musical theme and a pun. So that is my challenge. That's I'm also gonna make it be a pull card, something that will fit the theme for the designer challenge this month. And I can't wait to get started. So first I sketched out my plan and I did find the perfect pun online. It says, stop, you're under a rest. Get it? And it's gonna be a musical rest. The oval pull card is the perfect choice for this because it's got the slot and slider so I can move that rest. I'm starting with a piece of the dark fuchsia soft finish cardstock from Elizabeth Craft Designs and I'm cutting the length of the piece to 8 inches and the height to 6 inches. I'm not going to score it in the middle. I'd like to have a little bit more real estate on the right hand side so I'm going to score it 3 and 3 quarters from the left edge so that I end up with a slightly wider panel on the right side. I had this piece of photo play pattern paper that had music notes on it and that was just going to be perfect for the theme. I cut the panel down a little bit smaller than the panel of the card and then just glued my larger panel right there onto the colored side of the card on that larger right hand panel. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to close up the card and the other panel is actually going to be attached to the white side of the cardstock. That will allow me to have that pattern on the flipping oval once I've cut the pull card. I'll use temporary tape to hold my pull card die into position. I just need to place the alignment nubs over the folds, but they can go anywhere along the fold. So I've decided to go all the way to the top with my alignment nubs. That'll kind of kick my oval up a little bit, give me more room at the bottom for a greeting. I've also nested in the smallest oval decorator die that comes with the set so that I can have a window cut out of the flipping oval part. So I just need to carefully remove the die from the card. And then as far as training it, I just need to fold again, right, in that same fold, and then back fold around the oval. And now you'll see what I'm talking about, about how putting that panel of paper on the back of the card actually allows the flipping oval part to have that music notes pattern on it, not just the solid white that you would normally have with this type of cardstock. I'm going to do a fun technique to take advantage of the white core that's in this soft finish cardstock. I'm placing the flower stage it stencil inside the card, then just folding the card around it. Then I'm going to place the oval side down against an embossing sandwich in my die cutting machine. Now that's a double thick card, but luckily the stencil is not very thick, so it should be able to go through your machine. Just give it a little pressure, it'll go right through your machine. And what that's going to do, that embossing sandwich, is going to turn that stencil into an embossing plate. And you'll see what happened is it's just going to emboss those flowers all over the purple side of that cardstock. It's pretty leaving it just tone on tone, but it's also really nice when you sand the top of the cardstock. It will remove that fuchsia color and expose the white core on all of the flowers. So you can do this with a sanding block or what I'm using here is a groove tool by Momenta. And then I'll also use my groove sanding tool just to go around the edges of the rest of the card. If you're new to the pull cards, there's also a little integrated tuck slot that keeps them closed so you don't get an accidental reveal. I'll use the larger oval decorator die to cut a transparency so that I'll have a window pane, and I'm going to sink in the slot die into that piece and cut it at the same time so that my window pane for my card will also have a slot in it to be able to use the slot and slider. And I'll just use a fine little line of glue around the purple side of the oval so that's inside the card to add the transparency window pane. And I've just made sure that the slot, when I'm inside the card, the slot would be towards the upper right. What I'm using now is the 64 millimeter Elizabeth Craft Designs double-sided adhesive. And I'm gonna use that on the piece of soft finish cardstock that was left over from when I cut my card. And I'm just gonna trim that down to just the piece that has the adhesive on the back. What I'm gonna do with this piece is I'm gonna nest the two decorator ovals together so that I can create a little thin ring, an oval ring, 
that can go around the inside of that window and cover up that adhesive after it dries you won't be able to see it because it'll all be underneath this little self-adhesive ring. This would have been a great time to repeat that process and add that little purple ring on the front of the card as well. At this point, I didn't know that I wanted it. I keep a lot of blister packaging. It's nice and thick and clear, and it's perfect for things like this where I want to cut a nice durable slider arm out of a clear material. I'm going to go ahead and use the metal adapter plate in the sandwich because I am cutting through a thick plastic with the die. And other than that, I'm just going to use my regular sandwich and roll that right through. The slider arm cuts as a double with a cut up the middle so that you can fold it onto itself and make it double thick. I don't want to do that for this card. That's why I chose a thicker plastic to start with. I just want to have it be a single so I don't have to worry about adhesive being visible when I've glued two halves together. So all I've done is just separate it into two halves. I'm just going to use one of them. It goes through the slot from inside of the card and attaches up under the left hand flap. I found an image online of a rest and then just mirror imaged it and printed it onto the white side of the rich black soft finish cardstock and then I'm just going to fussy cut that out. Then when I turn it around to the front side of the black, I don't have any of the printer marks, it's just solid black cardstock, but because it does have the white core, I'm going to go ahead and use a dark Copic marker to just kind of fill in the white so that it doesn't have white on the edges. Any of the character dice would work for this card. I just chose Baker the Beaver. He's one of the new ones. He's super cute. Hannah lives in the Pacific Northwest where there are a lot of beavers, so I thought she would think that was kind of fun. And then what I want to do is I want to temporarily put the rest out on the end of the slider arm just so I can play with the position of the two pieces so that when you open it, that rest ends up sliding over and on top of Baker's head. And I figured out to make that work, I was going to need Baker to be right up next to the fold inside the card. And then I'm just playing with it in the closed position to make sure I get a position where he's straight, he's mostly hidden, except for what you can see through the window. And then when you open it, the rest is over his head. I computer generated the two parts of the pun and a size that would be small enough to use the sun that is included in the oval pull card to cut them out. And then I'm just going to brush a little bit of purple ink around the outside. I'm attaching the punchline to the slider arm inside the card with the card fully open so that I make sure that I place it in a position that it won't come through the slot, try and go through the slot when the card is open. And as that turned out, lucky me, it ended up being kind of in the perfect position to be able to add the stop one over the top of it when the card is closed so that you cannot read the punchline at all until the card is opened. So I'm just going to use some of the Elizabeth Craft Designs double-sided adhesive on the area on the oval that is over the top of the sun below it. And then I just need to line up my stop sun over the top of my you're under a rest sun so you cannot see it in the closed position, but then when you open it, it is revealed. I had that self-adhesive purple oval left over so that I could use that to cut a couple more suns. Now one of them I cut down into the adhesive side of the cardstock so that I knew that I would have a mirror image sun that would work on the back of the stop sun. So that creates the perfect mirror image sun that will go on the back of the first one. I just need to twist it around until I find the spikes that all line up. Now I realized there was a chance for a second reveal, which would be since the you're under arrest is going to slide out of the way, I can flip that over to the back side, take my other self-adhesive sun, and what I'm doing is I'm figuring out how it will go so that it lines up with the first one, but the adhesive side is up. So now when I close the card, it'll transfer that onto the back of the card and it's perfectly lined up under the stack. So now your under arrest moves out of the way and now I've got a spot for another little decoration. And what I'm using for decorations is the little cupcake that comes with Baker the Beaver. Okay, now comes the time on the card when I realized I really wish I would have added one of those oval rings to the front of the card too. I just think it would look cool there. So now unfortunately I have to do it by cutting the ring and then kind of sliding it under the sun. It's also going to have to slide under the slider arm itself. Then I'm going to peel up the adhesive just ever so carefully and weave it around and into place. So if you are going to make your version of this card and you do think you want this ring, definitely add it earlier, like before you put the slider arm in. Although if, like me, you change your mind, there's always solutions. So this was my solution to get it added on after the fact. 
I just went around leaving myself a little gap that I can just tuck those little ends right underneath the little stop sun. So my card is almost done. I've added a little strip of purple across the bottom just temporarily just to kind of see where I wanted it. That's actually going to become my little greeting strip. And what I decided to do, knowing how musical Hannah is, is rather than write out happy birthday, I drew in the notes to actually be able to play it. So those are the notes for happy birthday to you. I ended up with just a little bit of extra area after I'd put the notes on, so I went ahead and added the heart that comes with the oval pull card into that extra area. One of the highlights of my recent trip to England was getting to meet my design team member, Kaz Council, in person, and she presented me with a gift in this cute little customized box. It is my very own stamp using the Pop Post logo. So she was really sneaky. She had me send it to her. She said it was for her own use, but really she was making me this cool stamp that says Pop It Up Greetings from Texas, Karen Berniston, and the logo. I realize now that I stamped right over the top of where that heart is on the back, and so I didn't really get good pressure everywhere, but you can still read it, so it's going to be great. So here is the finished card. It measures five inches wide by six inches tall. It's pretty flat, so it should mail for a single stamp and an A7 envelope. Now normally with a pop post video, I would also share the reaction of the person when they got the card, but I did not think of that when I decided to use this card also for my designer challenge video, so it does need to be uploaded before I have a chance to mail the card to Hannah and get her reaction. But let's just assume that her reaction went something like this. Oh, Aunt Karen, you are the coolest! I hope that you will head over to the blog post where you will see photos, supply lists, everything for this card, as well as some amazing creations by the team for this month's challenge. Find out more about Pop It Ups and where they are sold in your area by going to elizabethcraftdesigns.com. I'm Karen Berniston. Thanks for watching.